Have you been asked to calculate the future value of a certain amount of money using tables and you're not quite sure how to start? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that with the tables in today's video. But first, I want to say that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now back to the video. If you're someone who likes simple explanations on how to do things that are financial or accounting related, give this video a thumbs up and that'll help with the YouTube algorithm and it'll be greatly appreciated by me. Thank you. All right, let's talk about finding the future value of a certain amount of money. In this case, I'm going to use $10,000 as the amount. We're going to find the future value of $10,000. I did a prior video where I found the present value of a certain amount of money. If you need to know how to do the present value using tables, I've linked that video up here. What we're looking at is an investment and we're going to place that $10,000 at work at the investment, whether it's a bank account, a money market. That investment is going to pay a regular interest rate on that $10,000. And let's see, our first example, we're going to do it for five years at 8% compounded annually. In other words, at the end of the year, the amount of interest earned is added into the principal amount. And then the following year, it will earn interest on that total amount, including the interest from the prior year. We expect the future value to be larger than the $10,000. And the reason I mention that is because we're making sure that we're using the future value table and it says future value of a dollar. And again, we're going to be doing it for 10,000. So we need to multiply it by whatever factor we find here. We're going to multiply that by the $10,000 that we're investing, but we expect it to have a larger amount. And the reason I mention that is because if you wind up with a smaller amount for the future value, chances are you are looking at the wrong table. That's where I see students make a mistake all the time. So make sure you're using the right table. Let's do the calculation for the first entry. So we're using $10,000 for five years at 8%. So I'm doing this and it's compounded annually. So it's going to be just five compounding periods, just like we're playing battleship. I'm going to go down here till I find five because that's the number of years and I'm going to go across until I find eight because eight is our interest rate. So I come down from the eight and go across from the five and that gives me the 1.46. I'm going to write that down. 1.46 9.33. That's our future value factor. I'm going to multiply that by the $10,000. That's our principal. And that's going to give us our future value. I'll use our the BA2 plus calculator, which yes, admittedly, I could just put those figures in here and get the future value. But today's video is finding the future value using the tables or 6933. So I take that factor and I multiply it by the 10,000. And mind you, it's 10,000. We could just move the decimal place over and that's really what we're going to wind up doing. But I'm going to use the calculator just to make sure we don't miss anything. $14,693.30. So that's our future value of the $10,000 if we invested it for five years at 8% interest compounded annually. Let's look at the next one. The next one, we're going to do five years at 8% compounded semi-annually. Semi-annually means twice a year. So if it's five years, twice a year, that's 10 compounding periods. So we're going to go on our table and we're going to come down to 10. And that is here because it's twice a year. There's 10 compounding periods, but it's not the full 8% at each compounding period. It's half. So we divide we multiply the number of periods and we divide the amount of interest. So since it was 8%, but it's half a year, it's twice a year. So we're going to go to 4%. That's half. So I come down from 4% and I come across from 10, just like we're playing Battleship. And I have 148024. So let's write that one down. So that's 1.48024. Oh, two, four. 
and I'm going to multiply that by the 10,000. And again, we can just move the decimal over, but I'm going to use the calculator. 1.48024 times 10,000 equals 14,802.40. And it is more than we earned here, and that is to be expected because there's more compounding periods. We're earning interest on interest faster. So when there's more compounding periods, you're going to earn more money. Let's look at the next one. Five years at 8% compounded quarterly. So now we're compounding it four times a year for five years. So five years times four times a year, that's 20 periods. So I'm going to, and we're going to be still at the 8%, but we have to take the 8% and we have to divide it by four because it's four times per year. So that's going to be 2%. So we need 20 is our, our number of periods and 2% is our interest rate. So let's go to the table. I'm going to find 20 here for the number of periods. I'm going to go across to 2%, which is right here. So I have, let me see if I can get these both on the screen at the same time. Not really, it's not easy to do that. I can maybe put this on top. Let's do it that way. No, that's not going to work either. So anyway, uh, I have 1.48595. Let's go ahead and multiply that by the 10,000. So I have 1.48595, and I'm going to multiply that by my 10,000. I went too far. Let's try that again. 1.48595 times 10,000 is equal to $14,859.50. Again, it's gone up because there's more compounding periods during those five years. All right, now we're going to change the interest rate to 10% back to being compounded annually. So we're going to look at our table and let's find five is the number of periods because it's once a year and we're going to come across to 10 is our interest rate. So that's that number there, the 1.61. So it's 1.61051. I'm going to multiply that by the 10,000. 1.61051 times 10,000 is equal to 16,000, $16,105.10. So that's going up quite a bit because of the higher interest rate. Now let's see if we reduce the interest rate, we should expect it to go down. We have five years at 6%. So we're going to find five years and come across to 6%. And that's right here. 1.33. So I'm going to write that down. 1.33823. And I'm going to multiply that by our 10,000. That's our principal amount. So 1.33823 times 10,000 equals 13,000. So you see it's dropped, and that is to be expected because we have a lower interest rate. And let's do one last one. This last one is for three years at 8% compounded annually. So we're going to find the three years, and that is here, and come across until we find the 8% again. So it's fewer years, but back to the original interest rate. So that's the 1.25971 times 10,000. All right, I'm going to show you a trick. And because it's a nice even number 10,000, as I mentioned, we're going to just move the decimal place over. Since we have the decimal here, we're going to move it over. Let's see how many spaces if we were to match this up. So that would mean the decimal would be here. So it's one, two, three, four. We're moving the decimal four places. So we're going to move it to the right. One, two, three, four. And that gives us our number of $12,597.10.
cents. So that's how we can do it without the calculator when it's a nice round number like 10,000. All right, so now you know how to find the future values of an amount of money using the tables. You know how to do that, but there's so much more you need to know. So I recommend that you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.